Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we build products in public. Each week, we'll give an honest peek into our lives as we share our struggles, our wins, and everything in between. I'm Benedict, and I'm feeling excited. <laughs> and I'm Benedicta. Today is January 3rd. This is episode number 165. And I'm feeling pretty much the whole feelings wheel today. <laughs> All over the place. <laughs> all over the place. I, I can pretty much all of them. So check out our feelings wheel link and, and learn your feelings. But yeah. Um, but since you're feeling excited, let's talk about what you did over the holidays. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, hope you had a nice start into 2023. Um, and may 2023 be as awesome as you want it to be and um yeah well said benedict well said i'm just skipping the whole new year <laughs> thing <laughs> pretending it's just another week well it kind of is isn't it <laughs> i mean what does it change it doesn't really change anything um nonetheless uh there was uh yeah there were holidays and uh vacations and stuff like that good food so overall i had a nice Christmas break, sort of. Um, so I took the week before Christmas off. Um, didn't really do anything, to be honest. Um, but we went uh, visiting my parents, and um, my sister's family also came over, and we had Christmas together, uh, which was what quite fun because um, my two nieces were there, and one is six months old, something like that, and the other one is. A uh, little over two years by now, and that was fun. Like for her, it being the like the first Christmas, she kind of participated. Oh, yeah. I mean, Christmas in. is a lot more fun with kids involved. I I must agree with that, especially if they're enthusiastic about Christmas. Like Lillian is super enthusiastic about Christmas, and it just makes it more fun for everyone involved. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I think. She doesn't quite get the concept yet, but uh, next year, uh, at least she understood what what gifts are and stuff <laughs> like that. And my dad had this cute idea of um, basically he printed stickers with all our faces on it. Oh! So instead of having names on the presents, he put like we put like the stickers on them, so she could go around and like pick. A a present of the uh, from under the tree and then look at the picture and then hand it to the right person uh so that was a lot of fun and that i thought it's really smart genius i was always the person because i was the oldest of all my cousins so i was the one always picking out the presents and like handing handing them out because i was the one who could read right before <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> we're younger also just because i really wanted to be that person like but um <laughs> but i like the, the 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 sticker id that was that was cool yeah Kudos that was super dad. smart i yeah. yeah for sure and she had a lot of fun like mm. uh um yeah it, it just was was lovely watching her being excited and like Having no problems with giving someone else a gift, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of expected her to just like rip them all open, but uh, she didn't. Yeah, um, they're pretty so, good with that. Like yeah. some of them just want to do their own gifts, but they kind of all get the gift concept pretty, pretty fast. And as long as everybody gets gifts, like on Christmas, like they also get gifts. But I remember, I don't know if it was like around two or three when Lillian went to her first like kid's birthday party. And only the one kid got the gifts. Like that's less fun than Christmas because at least you know, <laughs> you know at least you get some yourself. Um, but having to watch yeah, somebody else like open fifteen that. presents and then like there being none for her, not as gracious in that situation. She is now. She's learned a social kind of codes around this. But um, I remember there being a time where it was like, but but what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, Anyways, it was fun. Uh had a lot of lots of lots of good food. And um then um yeah, the week between Christmas and New Year's uh was a work week for me, but it's one of my favorite work weeks of the year. Uh, because everyone's pretending everyone else is on vacation, so it's super quiet, there's not a lot going on. 
there might have been no customer support at all. I don't quite remember. It wasn't it wasn't a lot for sure. Um, and I got a lot of quiet exploration time out of it, which was exciting. Um, so I played around with uh, fly.io a little bit um, as a potential like hosting alternative uh, compared to Heroku. Um, would that be for the front looks end promising, or for but, everything? No, that would be for everything. You're you're like, monolith. Type. Yeah, like uh, for for the for the back end for sure. The front end uh, um, single page application is on Netlify right now. Okay, so um, which separate. is fine, but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have to be on Netlify. I guess it could be anywhere. Um, the the back end is on Heroku right now, and uh, now that we moved the database out of Heroku, it feels like more attainable to move everything else out of there as well. Um, but I haven't made a decision yet. I just started playing around with it. And for now, I guess we we'll just not touch it. Um, but again, getting a feeling for all the alternatives out there is probably a good idea. So it will happen at some point, but probably not anytime soon. Um, so I used most of the week uh, for that. And then I also prepared uh, a little bit for the migration uh, from uh, what I just mentioned, the database moving it out of Heroku into Crunchy Bridge. And um, the bridge wasn't crunchy at all. Um, so we did <laughs> I was trying on... to stay serious. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> have you gotten your crunchy cereal box yet? Like it needs to happen in twenty. I have no crunchy cereal box uh, yet, uh, but who knows? Um, but anyway, so it went anyways, fine. Um, it, it went fine. Yeah, it was super smooth. It basically was like we practiced. Um, so um, we scheduled the time uh, a couple of weeks before that. So yeah, we basically showed up at the time and date, um, put our application in, in maintenance mode or the read-only mode I mentioned um, earlier, which worked well. Um, and then the data was, at this point, the data was basically already moved over because they set up a follower database that would just like continuously synchronize the data. And it was more a matter of like stopping that and then promoting the the new Crunchy Bridge database to being the primary database inside our application. Um, and in theory, that would have been it. Um, but because of some weirdness and, and how... Um, yeah, like data encoding in Heroku works compared to how it works in Crunchy. Um, we had to rebuild a couple of the indexes. Um, so that took about 25 minutes or so where, yeah, we had to be down. Like you couldn't, you can't do any writes and, and no, nothing, like not change the data in the database while that's happening. Um, so that was basically the majority of the downtime we had, like just rebuilding the indexes and then after that was done, turning everything back on. And um, yeah, again, was super smooth. All in all, all it took like 40 minutes. Um, and yeah, and that was it was mostly those, smooth sailing after that. The 40 minutes was including those indexes that was being rebuilt? Yes, that's including oh, that's the indexes good. being rebuilt. 40 minutes. So basically... 25 minutes of indexes being rebuilt and then a couple before that to, to shut everything down and put everything in maintenance mode, make sure everything's in a correct state, then do the, the, the switch over and then a couple more minutes to make sure the new connection string works and uh, we can connect to the database and get the same results and stuff like that. And once we knew everything was fine, we turned off maintenance mode, switched everything on and it just kept working from there on. Um, there was only a slight glitch a couple days later um, where we basically exhausted our I.O. operations on the, on the disks that uh, the database reads and writes from. Um, so we had a little bit of a performance problem two nights after because it was a slow decline of the performance. <laughs> <laughs> and then one night it was like just gone. Um but we were able to recover from that. I think it didn't really harm anyone. It just just lets that like data ingestion and segment evaluation took longer than usual. Um, 
and we were able to fix that and get it into a better, better state by increasing um, the basically the the I/O operations limit um, that uh, yeah basically AWS enforces up on you. It's a little bit weird. I learned a lot of things, uh, but the database is now in a state where it can perform all the read and write operation it needs to without hitting any limits. So um, yeah. I'm I'm super happy. So did the um, people from looking Country at the Bridge, metrics were they essential to all of this? Could you have done like look not thinking about it being Crunchy Bridge, but like if you were to do a migration from Heroku to anything, had you been able to do that a hundred percent yourself or was like the knowledge that they provided essential? The knowledge they provided was definitely helpful. I'm not entirely sure we could have done it without them. At least not in a in a well sort of instant manner of uh, how we did it, um, because I don't think there would be a way to to set up the streaming replication ahead of time and stuff like that. So, if we had done this just by ourselves, it would probably been like turn off everything, download all the data from the database, write all the data in the database elsewhere, uh, turn everything back on. And then after the fact, discover that all the indexes are not working anymore and need to be re rebuilt and stuff like that. So all in all, having them help us with this was was amazing. And uh, I don't think it would have been as smooth without their experience and their, their support on this. And um, yeah, their support has been stellar since. Um, with the performance issue, uh, it was... January 1st, like basically while I was celebrating New Year's, the database was like slowing down and coming <laughs> to a halt. And I didn't notice because I didn't check any monitoring uh, that night. And only the next morning when I when I woke up, I was like, what, 700 emails from the monitoring system? Something's going on. <laughs> um, but uh, it was like... I reached out to support and um, it was relatively like it, it was quite fast when it was clear like what the issue was. I, I guess we all had a hunch that this might be a problem. So we immediately looked at the right place and noticed that uh, the IOPS limit um, we decided on or like that got enforced upon us um, was such a low. So um, the way it works is that you have to provision more storage space and then Amazon gives you like uh, three times the gigabytes of storage space based in I/O operations. Um, who knew? <laughs> I didn't know about that. Um, so now we I have like concerned one I never concerned myself with things like that. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. Me, me neither. Until until last week, I guess. So now we yeah. have a database with 1.5 terabytes of data. Um, we just use a fraction of it, but we need that much of storage space to be able to read and write at the rate that we need to. So anyways, um, things are in good shape now. Um, database performance increased. Um, I looked at uh, the metrics for our background queues and stuff like that. And like the long running stuff basically runs in half the time. Um, so it's, a well, not quite, but like, I don't know, 1.4, 1.3, uh, time increase in, in, in speed, I guess. Um, and we were paying less. So uh, this might be the first uh, performance issue that we solved by throwing less money at it, <laughs> um, which usually <laughs> is not the case. <laughs> I feel a case study coming on Crunchy Bridges uh, website soon because this is a glowing <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> But I'm really happy. Like yeah, I, I, I was a little worried for you sitting there over Christmas break and 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 like this not going so well. Like even though you, it was your work week, it's still kind of you know a week where you, you don't want to be stressed out because <laughs> I don't know. It's just. Do you have a? Did we talk about this last time? Do you have a specific ver word in German for those days between Christmas and New Year's Eve? I'm not entirely sure. There might be, but I'm. If there is, I don't know it. Yeah, because in in Norwegian, what's the Norwegian we have, word for this? So in Norwegian is a rumjul, which kind of means like 
either like break Christmas or like space Christmas, if you like translate it directly. And it's like the the name for those days. And everybody will say that kind of rumjul doesn't count. Like those are days that doesn't count anywhere. Like you you won't be if you write Christmas letters. I think I mentioned this. Like if in Norway it's a tradition to write Christmas letters and they're mailed before Christmas, right before Christmas, right? So whatever you do right. and then they start again, you know, January first, like you don't look at those. It's just a time to chill. Um yeah, so we have a we have a word for that where it's just kind of like hidden days that that are all yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's why I like it so much. Yeah. And uh, yes, we put the migration in that very week, but exactly for that reason, because mm -hmm. we assumed that like the effect, like even if this didn't go well, yes, it would be shitty for me, but it, like for our customers, like most of them probably wouldn't care that much. Yeah. So yeah, felt so like the right thing to do in that week. For my little side project, Prune Your Follows, it was the exact opposite because for those who listened to the last recording, I had a DM from a TechCrunch reporter. And like I always do, I assume good attempt. Um, but then I was like, I don't know, like, is this legit? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was legit. So on December 28th, there was an article on TechCrunch about Prune Your Follows. Um, and that brought a lot of pruners to the table. And um, nice. I don't know how many times we've been blocked since launching Pruner Follows by Twitter, because when you uh, facilitate more than 500 unfollows in 24 hours, you get banned for another 24 hours. So we need to figure out a way mm. to like stay consistently under 500, because then it's kind of rolling. But as soon as you hit 20, no, 524 hours, then you get caught off for a full 24 hours, which is quite a long break. Um, but if for like the personal, for a person's own rate limiting, you can do 15, 50 unfollows in 15 minutes. And then as soon as you've like, wait a minute, you're allowed to like keep on going. You don't get kind of blocked. But for the app one, right. you get blocked for 20 as soon as you hit the limit. So anyway, people haven't really complained though. I just grab their email address when they um when when they get hit with a limit so that I can email them. Have I emailed them? No. Have the emails gotten into the user list system? No. <laughs> they are sitting in the database <laughs> and I will at some point get them all the way into user list and then start sending people reminders to come back when like there's not that much going on. I'll need to figure out a system here where like I can maybe trigger emails when it's like a slow day to like a third of the list. I don't know. But interestingly for me though, like this is crazy usage, like, cause it's a free product, right? So it seems like you get a lot more users that way. Who knew? Um, but we've un we've facilitated over 10,000 unfollows by now. And I've nice. got about 700 users in the, um, 700 registered users i've out of those i think i have like a 250 email addresses which is quite i think that's quite good um and we've like reached we're, we're above a million records in like our account table so for me that's like a lot of data <laughs> uh, and it's still like the app still works like searching and filtering and all of that like stuff that i haven't really spent that much time on because it comes out of the box with Seda, who paid us to make this app. Um, so that's pretty cool that it's still kind of just like working. Um, I might have mentioned it last time, but we have had some issues with some people not being able to import all their, um, import all the people they follow because some people follow like 16,000 people and like 300,000, I don't know. But like some people are allowed to follow more than 5,000 people. So I need to figure out a system for those as well or just tell <laughs> them the app is not for you. Like, <laughs> or like you got to pay us a lot of money if you have 60, if you follow 16,000 people. Um, and there was like a UFT8 import problem. It seems that you're allowed to put illegal characters in the location data or in, on Twitter. Interesting. Yeah. So that took a while to figure out because it like failed for some people and it said like UFT8 error or something when it was trying to import into into the SATA database. And um and then we like had to go through a lot of them and it was like some weird character in some dude's location. Because some people use the location 
thing in their profile to like add in some extra special fan content. Um, and maybe Twitter forgot to to validate that field. Or maybe they just allow more things than you have T8 in that field. I don't know. But anyway, it's been fun. And it's kind of yeah. just been because I didn't really work over the Christmas. So it's kind of just been going. I did Good change after. Yeah, I will. After the TechCrunch article came out, I changed the alert that tells you that you've been rate limited to mention TechCrunch. But other than that, I didn't really um, do much. Um, but I started the year on a good foot because if you've been around slow and steady for a long time, last year we started up the Yoga Pirates with a 30 day yoga with Adrian challenge, which is uh, on again now in January. And we are still some of the same people um, who are doing this. And one of them is a slow and steady listener, David. Um, and we've migrated to discord for our community which i just i still i don't know have you you know that like scene that guy that says like hello fellow kids and then he looks like an old dude with the skateboard it like comes <laughs> up on social media well i feel like that person every time i log into discord but i'm trying to <laughs> embrace it so one of the things i did um i started my year with was on january 1st i created a discord bot very proud of myself and also tested out a new hosting solution because it has to listen, you know, to events from Discord. So my typical mm. serverless stuff doesn't really work. Like this is a little node app that has to kind of keep um, keep listening. And I just like this is how randomly you choose, you know, choose services. Like somebody. Oh my god! I just broke my. <laughs> office. <laughs> uh, I was trying to like I was trying to turn off the phone <laughs> without making any noise, but that didn't work. Anyway, somebody mentioned something on Twitter about like a railway and it worked out of the box. So it's hosted on railway, which I'd never heard about before. Never heard about no. that. And uh you get 500 hours for free. So I was like, okay, I'll just do that and I'm good to go. Um, so what you can do then is that in our yoga channel, if you log with like a check mark emoji, anything that starts with a check mark emoji will then be logged into the database as a day you do yoga. And then I am adding some extra commands in the coming months where you can like see the amount of days you've done yoga this year so that you can like keep tabs on your streak. But I'm not really a fan of streaks. I kind of just want to do how many days have you done yoga and like how many days are we into the year kind of so you can get a little feel for like how many of the days have you done yoga but yeah uh we'll add a can add a link in the description to to the little yoga bot because it's it's tiny so if you've never made a discord bot and you want to this could be a good one to have a look at because it only does that one thing at least for now so it's it's uh manageable to kind of read through it um, but yeah, so if you want to join our little yoga pirate community, you know, reach out. We try to do yoga every day, but we do not get mad at each other. If we don't, we're just here to support you and nudge you toward your yoga goals. You want to join, Benedict? That, yeah. <laughs> not sure about, uh, about doing this, but I mean... No judgment or anything. I, I'm just on my three day, three days a week routine of doing some exercises. Um, I'm trying to stick to that. Like that's my excuse for not joining. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good. That is a good goal. Oh my god, we have to. <laughs> this recording. We need to stop. That's the second time my phone has just like jumped off the window still and crashed into the <laughs> oven and just made as much noise as possible. <laughs> this I don't know what this means well, for 2020. Just... I don't know what this means for 2023, everybody. Will it crash? Like, will it crash? I don't know. Oh, oh well. Whew. Who knows? Who knows? All the feelings. All the feelings. But I think that's it for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's that's it for me as well. So let's uh, let's stop this recording before your uh, phone's f fully broken. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
um, and hopefully before it comes alive <laughs> and attacks me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll yeah, see you around the interwebs. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. Bye.